conversation with former Congressman Pete Hoekstra in that first segment as a former congressman we're talking campaigns and what happened last night now pete we're going to ask you to put on your hat as the former chairman of the house intelligence committee and uh, talk about a story that uh, really shocked me uh, details emerging about the fight against isis but an unlikely alliance at least the way it looks to me kurds now aiding isis in the battle for Kobani. According to reports, hundreds of Kurds have joined ISIS since fighting began and are now using their knowledge to go against some of their own people. Pete, I know we should always beware the myth of a monolith, but what is this deal with the Kurds? No, I think what you've got here is you've got a faction of the Kurds that, uh, you know, uh, have broken off. They've aligned with ISIS. You know, the, the Kurds have been a battered uh, you know, minority for years in Iraq, uh, in Syria, and these parts of places. So I'm not surprised that it, it, it's not a monolithic uh, force out there. I do some. I do. I do work for the Kurds. Uh, so yeah, obviously we're disturbed and we're disappointed that that's what we're seeing with some Kurds in Kobani. Uh, but the you know the real story where the Kurds is the Kurds are the one force in Iraq uh, that are being effective. They're taking losses. They're fighting hard. Uh, and they're not getting the weapons and the equipment that they need to do. And I think some of the, the problems that you may see is some of the Kurds are saying, well, you know, hey, you know, they're, we're not getting the support from the United States that we need. Uh, so there's some question about, uh, at least with a small fraction of them, as to who they should be aligned with. But the bottom line is the Kurds, the vast majority of the Kurds, have been America's friends for a long time and will continue to be America's friends. But to say the least, this is an unwelcome development. Do the Kurds that with whom you work, do they have counterintelligence operations at work to identify the guys who have crossed over to help ISIS? Oh, the, uh, the Kurds are very, very good. They're not only good fighters, they're very good at intelligence. Uh, and you can bet that they're distur as, as disturbed as what you and I are with these developments. Uh, and, uh, you know, these fighters, these folks that have aligned themselves with, with ISIS, with ISIL, uh, they will pay a price because the Kurds that I work with recognize how dangerous uh, ISIL is to the religious minorities and other minorities and to the Kurdish regions uh, in Syria and in Iraq. Uh, Pete, before we part company, 30 seconds on Russian-American relations. Apparently there's, a, there's an exhibition in uh, Moscow, Putin spanking Obama. That is one of the cartoons or illustrations. Your take on that? Uh, it's absolutely accurate. Uh, you, you know, remember a few months ago we were talking about as the United States was confronting uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, in Afghanistan, we were buying their helicopters. Uh, now we have our military folks in Moscow negotiating the servicing arrangements for these helicopters that we just bought. Uh, we're sending all kinds of mixed messages. And Putin absolutely. We'll have to leave it there. Us. Pete, thank you yep. very much. Let's talk about a different time in our history, an airlift to Israel, the subject of this American moment. On October 6, 1973, while the nation of Israel observed Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year for Jews, the combined military forces of Egypt and Syria launched a simultaneous and surprise attack on Israel's southern and northern borders. Within days, the Israeli army found itself in retreat, losing a third of its equipment and outnumbered by the enemy three to one. As he could not believe, he said, we cannot stop them. Recognizing their very existence was at stake, President Nixon moved quickly to resupply our ally Israel and their besieged army. With an around-the-clock airlift of U.S. military support, the tide of battle shifted, and soon the Israeli armies were advancing into both Syria and Egypt, with Israeli General Ariel Sharon's tanks threatening Egypt's third army with annihilation. The Soviet Union, who were supporting the Arab armies, quickly called upon President Nixon to stop the Israelis' advance or risk a larger war. The president intervened, saved the Egyptian army, and then used the opportunity to convince Egypt's President Anwar Sadat to seek a peaceful solution to a conflict that had plagued the region for decades. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.